All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. And we want to welcome all the moms and the dads here today. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we want to welcome our state and national friends and the mothers out there. Good morning and welcome. Oh, man. It was funny. We get here today and we start telling all the mothers happy mother's day and we get all the guys answering it was like that is funny that was funny i was like all right okay we're just going to jump into this we're going to go to john 18. you know something about moms that so much of the world just really doesn't understand god created us ladies for some amazing things you know? And I tell you what, looking at the women in this room, knowing that the strength that they've had to do the things that they've done is pretty cool. I, I constantly stop and look, and, and I'm so blessed to be a part of a family that has strong women that really does. And I know some people, you know, they may not fully understand that, but people that know me do understand because that's something that so many people need. They need strong men and women in their lives. But this is Mother's Day, so we're talking about the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to talk, we're going to go to John 18. We're going to go to verse 33 because also, you know, we're called to teach truth to our families, but we have to live truth as well, right? And we see in the world today so many people, <clears throat> they struggle with truth. And they struggle with it because many feel uncomfortable with the truth because they have become so comfortable with a lie. You know, talking and visiting with people here lately that have come across my path, we've had kind of similar situations going on. And when we talk about some of the things that they've gone through, you know, they said, but the truth hurts. Why does the truth hurt? But yet when you deal with things that we call a lie, because it doesn't line up with the word, they're comfortable with. And it's because what? They're not introduced to the truth. And that's what we're supposed to do. And so it's just, there's a whole lot that the Lord has really been, you know, showing me that I have stopped and, and I've had to even remind myself. So in verse 33, we're going to start there. It said, Then Pilate entered the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? So we know this is when what? They were had the... Jesus was basically on trial, right? So, verse 34 says, Jesus answered him, saying, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews? But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find him in no fault at all. But you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. So, again, if we look at when Jesus was on trial, we also know that Pilate went over and he washed his hands of it, right? Right. But we know Jesus is truth. Yeah. 
truth is a person. Right? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In the beginning was truth. The Word was uh, with truth. The truth was with truth. Is not God truth? Yes. See, it's how we start looking at things. We want to sit here and categorize. God is wanting us to have such a relationship with Him. We look at the relationships we have in the home, and they really can't be successful without a relationship with Him. You know who your mom is, you know who your dad is, you know they protect you, but do you really know that he is the greatest protector you'll ever have? Do you, do you really understand that when you do what he has taught us, what he has instructed us, then who's our protector? He is, right? So here we have a man that's sitting here and he's questioning Jesus. In verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I'm a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is, in the, uh, that is of the truth heareth my voice. Again, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? Didn't he just tell him what truth was? But he, see, if you don't hear truth, you don't recognize truth. And the problem is, again, it goes back to where so many people are so uncomfortable with truth because they have become too comfortable with a lie. The world puts restrictions on what you can and can't do. Or there's none at all. No boundaries, right? But Jesus, that's different. He says, I came to, he came to what? Bring us into a place of truth of who we truly are. And if we don't do that successfully, how can we help others? You can't. And it's interesting because of the circumstances that we've been going through, there's been a lot of people all of a sudden, and I talk about with the, the death in my family, all of a sudden there's a lot of death with people that I know just happening. And so a lot of questions are coming up. So see, I look at every situation, Lord, what can I do? What truth can I bring in it for them? Right? And it's very interesting some of the conversations I'm having with people because they have fallen into what the world's teaching about the word that is not true. We do not turn into angels when we die. We do not get heavenly wings. Do you know that we're actually, if we say we're sons and daughters, then that's what we are. But so many people don't get that. Some people, they think, well, I'm going to go out, and is it wrong if I go out and I try to talk to them, and I should expect them to answer? And I said, if they do, you better run, because that's not them. I said, you know, I said in the Bible, it talks about where the people wanted to, you know, we need Samuel. Samuel was dead. So he, they went to a witch and was like, hey, bring Samuel. And it says that, Sam, that he ascended. Well, uh, that's out of, so out of order. That's your first clue. He ascended. That means he came up. Yeah. And so it's like, no, no. But it's, it's interesting, the conversations that all of a sudden I'm having, and it's another ministry moment. See, our lives don't stop because of our situation and our circumstance. In fact, you got to be ready with whatever you're going through because something's going to happen and God will use you if you're obedient to help others. And I just find out that's where I'm at right now. Teaching people, you don't have to go out because you're hurting and you're going through what you're going through. Do you know if they know Jesus? This is the biggest thing that I've, uh, one of the biggest things. It's like, but, I mean, how do you know they know Jesus? And I said, well, did you ask them? If they were there long enough, did you ask them? If they were, you know, present or if, well, I don't know. I mean, they were, you know, in this particular situation, then what was their lifestyle? Sometimes you have to trust it, but sometimes you know. And then we were talking the other day, and sometimes people like to put a time frame on how long they had to be a believer before they go to heaven. It's like... I'm sorry, you don't. If they accepted it, 
they accepted their salvation. They accepted truth. They accepted him as Lord and Savior. Then at that moment, what? Right? They're saved. But, well, but I don't get it. I don't get it. If, if that's true, then, I mean, but they didn't walk out that walk. And we've had these conversations. Well, maybe they didn't, but I am. Are you? See, it gives those ministry opportunities. People have gotten so caught up in these places that they don't, they get hung up in grief. They get hung up. And the Lord began to show me, it's like whenever you sit there and you, you know, the Bible says that we're to die daily, right? We're to die to self, die to self daily, correct? Why do people struggle with that? And one of the things, not the only thing, but one of the things I thought was interesting because people have an image of what that looks like and because they don't know what it's going to look like when they do, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of those places. And it's like, no, let it go. Because whom the sun set free is what? Free indeed, but they don't know what that freedom is because it's really not being taught. Not, not like it needs to be. And that's what about here is so beautiful because we dive into things, but we don't go so deep that people are like, what? We don't get it. You have to know what's for the body, right? Some people like things real simple and that's good. Some people, they want to dive deep. But I like here, God knows where everybody's at. And the truth can't be compromised because the truth is what? It's solid, it's constant, it's absolute. People always say, well, you, they've compromised the truth. How can you when it's solid? No, you compromised. Right. Right. You compromised. And that's hard to hear sometimes, but that's the beauty about truth. When you hear truth and it stirs you up, know that oh, if I'm uncomfortable with truth, that means I've become too comfortable with something else, right? Right. Everybody good? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. When you go back and you look at Pilate, Pilate literally rejected truth. Truth stood before him, and that was Jesus himself. Did he not? And did he reject him? He didn't want to have anything to do with it. He knew what the truth was, but he didn't want to be a part of that. So what did he do? Well, your, your traditions, your culture. You're this, you're that. We'll put it off on somebody else, but it still falls on you if you know truth and you want to deny it. He should have stood up. But some people, again, they go back and they want to go, well, it was a religious thing. It was a cultural thing, whatever. Truth is truth. It doesn't change. It's constant. It's absolute. So he did what? He denied truth. He rejected truth. And truth stood right there before him. Interesting, huh? We see those things and, and, and it really made me stop and go, you know what? Every time I'm challenged by truth, I've had to be honest with myself and go, inside, oh no, I didn't like how that made me feel. Mm -mm. What did I immediately do? I deny truth. I rejected truth. And people struggle and they're like, well, what does that mean? In that moment, I rejected Jesus because he is truth, right? right? And this is the thing, people sit there and you try to bring them out of those places that they have fallen into with wrong information or they've fallen into based on tradition and religions that I'm still, it's funny, how you talk about membership Sunday. Is that right? I'm like, what is that? What is that? I've never heard that. I'm thinking, what did I miss? Because sometimes I find out that there are things that he knows, Farron knows, others know about certain things I don't know about. Because I'm like, I don't go and I don't dive into those things. Some of it's just from experience just being in and out of the church through different, you know, God has you in one church and different church arrangements, I guess. 
And some of that I don't know. So when I do, sometimes it makes me feel bad. That's all I'm like, I don't know what that is. And then when I hear others go, we don't either. Okay, good, good. I thought it was just me. But the thing is, you see though how something, some church organizations, if it doesn't go with this, then I don't know it. Now there was a church that I went to when I was born again, yeah. I mean, their Bible was that thick. And you had three more books on top of it you had to know. And I'm like, what? I don't read all that in here. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't read that that's what it takes to know him. I don't read that's what it takes to be who I am in him. That's just man-made stuff, you know? Right. Something also came back to me today about the five-fold ministry. I don't know why, but it did this morning. You know, the five-fold ministry was to edify the saints. It was to build the saints, the church. Not sinners, the saints, right. because of the gifts. And the Lord's been highlighting that again. And I'm like, you know what, Lord? Or is it something needs to be, people need to be reminded of again? Because I remembered when it was taught before, whew, it stirred a lot up. And God said, well, of course it did because it was truth. And people were so uncomfortable with it because they were in a state where they looked at an organization and not the outline of what God said, the gifts, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like if we look at our home lives and everything, there's an order to everything, right? right? But you have to know the order to do it right. And when people start learning that order, it's beautiful because you start seeing what? Fruit. You start seeing things happen. But then also you get those that come in that may not know the Lord till later on in life. And then they want to go back and fix everything that it's like, no, move forward. Stop going backwards. Stop looking backwards. Stop. Because if Jesus did that, I don't know. We, he might have been like, mm-mm, no. I don't know. But I know the thing that I see so much of when people deal with loved ones, children moving out, they become empty nesters, whatever. I wish I could have done things differently. Well, you can't, right? You just can't. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do from this day forward? That's the key. So here, again, the reason I'm talking about Pilate, he had an opportunity. Now, we know what prophecy said. We knew it had to come to pass, right? But unfortunately, some people had to kind of be the bad people, bad guys, but it didn't mean there wasn't an opportunity. Right. Didn't mean that could have been, maybe, but it was up to them. But as soon as you basically wash your hands of truth in a moment because of either who said it or... If you read it and you want to wash it, well, I, not for me. That, that, that's, not, that's not talking about me. What are you doing? You're in that moment, what? Denying the truth. But yet we will sit there and people will fight a worldly system because based off their truth. They will sit there and they will fight and fight and fight, whether it's politics, whether it's family, whatever, a, a worldly system and that becomes their truth, and then they get confused when they see the truth. And you know, I have found when you follow this truth, God will work out the other, because a lot of it's not true. We know where we're going. We know where the country's going. We've been told to prepare. We've been told to get ready. So nobody can be surprised, right? The truth has been placed. It's all been out there. So now it's kind of like I'm in that place of like, okay, tidying up. Does that make sense? Tidying up, making sure. It's like we were going through the garden yesterday and I had to transplant some stuff because it was getting too big for the container. And it was funny. I was like, I got, a, I got two big beans. I got two little big bean pods. I'm so proud of my beans. I don't know why, but I am. It just was, that was the thing that grew. 
And it was like, if anything, I can grow a bean. I know that. I just got to figure out how to get it more. I can get it to multiply a little more. But I can do it. And you know what? Everything I do, I always go back to the Word because I want to be able to take my life and live it accordingly in everything that I do. In everything that I do. So if something doesn't live, I do. I'm one of those. Why? What did I leave out? What ingredients did I not put in there? Was it too much sun? Did I water it too much? But I know the word says that we're supposed to be watered. By, so see, I go back and I start talking to, that's just me. And it's funny because I'll sit out there and laugh at myself because you can't overwater, you know, you're not, you gotta be careful, you can't overwater things. But I still take it back to the truth and I still tell myself about what the truth says about the word of God. Even in everything that I do, I have fun with it. I really do. And I, and I like that with, I love that. That was just awesome. That was great. It's just, we have to realize, um, we've got to realize when truth is set before us, don't reject it. You may not understand it. Don't reject it. Because don't we have to receive it even if we don't get it? If it's in the word of God, of course, and then God, what? He'll bring it out when it's time. Go to First Peter 5. Everybody good? Because I'll tell you something else, too, and this is something I also... How many of us know when we deal with our our flesh, it likes to be stroked, it likes, our ego likes to be coddled and hugged sometimes. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like that. And you know, I'm finding though, there's okay, there's times when it's okay a little bit, but then there's times you got to put it on check. You really do. Going through this stuff, like what we've been dealing with, just getting some things in order, it's amazing. People are saying, you should have done this, and you should have done that, and you should have done this, you should have done that. And it's like, no. Let me tell you what I did and why I did it. I'm not going to explain why I shouldn't, why I should have done that. I'm going to tell you why. And they're like, oh. And it's funny because they're like, you know what? We would have done it out of our emotions. I said, yep, and I know what would have happened. It would have been a hot mess. And then, you know. Where will we go from there? And that's why sometimes it's okay, but sometimes you gotta check yourself. You really do, you've gotta check your flesh, especially when it comes, and a lot of you, again, I know we're in places right now, you're right there, there's some serious things going on and you're, your flesh is wanting to respond, right? Come on. Some of them are like, I ain't saying nothing, but it's okay, I already know. Because mine does that too, but then what do we do? We have to check our flesh. Doesn't mean what we feel is not valid, but it's what you do with it. Remember, you gotta train your senses. Yay? Yeah. Yay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 1 Peter 5, 1. It says, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's, uh, over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not. Now, this, he's not talking to just leaders at that time. He's talking to the body of Christ. Is he not? You are called to be leaders of yourself first, Come on, you can't, <laughs> there comes a point you have to take that accountability because are you the one that gets you up in the morning? Yeah. Are you the one that gets you to church? Yeah. Are you the one that gets you in the word? So you are taking leadership of yourself, responsibility. Then when you do that, then what comes next? Then comes your family, right? So he's sitting here and he's saying, in ver uh, we'll do this in verse one again, the elders which are among you, I exhort you, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God. Your family is also part of the flock. 
You, if your family's not always in the church, who's going to feed them if they don't feed themselves? You have to. So it says, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight. It didn't say, here, let me, let me give you the oversight. It said, take it. Right. You take the oversight thereof. Not by constraint. No. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. But see, if you don't have an understanding of what truth is for your life, you will struggle teaching truth to others because you'll look at it as a headache, as a heartache. And that's something the Lord has also shown me. So many people, it grieves them so much because they don't have a true heart of what this really means. Because if you did, then you want somebody to know the truth because it set you free, right? You've got fruit. You've got manifestation of what you've been studying, what you've been doing, what you've been learning. And all of a sudden, you know it works. And you want to what? You want it for someone else. But you can't want it for someone out there if you don't want it for someone in here. And I'm talking about your own home. See, so many people out there, I know the word, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to preach and preach. What about your home? We've talked about this, but God is not letting up on this. Because what's going to happen if, oh, excuse me, when things go south? We're prepared, right? But we're still going to have to all probably be what? Together. So that means you get to find out how. <laughs> you think you know people until you live with them. You think you know people. You have an idea based on what you know. Live with somebody. Oh, yeah, and you'll even find out a lot about yourself. That's right. You really will. <laughs> so this is why it's so important. Because if we say it and we say it and we say it and we talk about it and we talk about it, it's great. But guess what's going to happen? The day will come. You get to walk that out. Yay. Or find out... If you can or can't, just saying. It's always going to be there. Then verse 3 says, Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And here's something that also is so true. You know, I hear people talk, and, they, and when you hear somebody say, you know, there's this one person throughout my whole life, they know the Lord, they love the Lord, oh my goodness, oh, they're just their faith, and that one person, just one? Just, just one? It, just one? And it's like, hmm. So it may, if I'm around them, I'm like, well, am I not? I mean, you have to sit there and you got to go, what about, I mean, am I not that influence? And do I not have any influence? And if I don't, then I always do check myself because I go back to the attitudes. Am I too familiar? What am I doing? Because I've messed up over the years. I have. I mean well, but I was always one of those. It's the truth. It'll set you free. And they're like, ah, but the way you're bringing it, I don't know. Because my heart is there, but I have to learn the love walk. <laughs> I, that's something I've had to learn. And, you know, and I talked about the one chaplain we talked with. He said, I, he said one thing. He said, when we were talking about New Way, when it comes to people that deal with addictions and everything, he said, I, I can't. I don't have the patience for them. And I thought that was interesting because that's exactly what he came out of. And I, I understood what he was saying, though. He said, when God set me free, he did it like that. Years and years and years and years and years did it like that. So I know because of my relationship how fast it can happen. He said, and dealing with people that want to procrastinate or want to just keep lingering. He said, I, I struggle with that. He said, having the patience there. He said, when I know God can, and people just don't seem to want it really like that. He said, it's just, that's not for me. And I got what he was saying. I did, I understood it. But that doesn't mean that we still don't walk it out with people. But you have to know what people, who really wants it. If they really want it, that's different. Yeah. It's the ones that, nah, they'll tell you they want it. But you know, by conversations, actions. 
Facial expressions are amazing. <laughs> they are. The noises are amazing. I heard that. And then they're like, what? <laughs> so then he goes on and says, when the chief shepherd shall appear, and who's that? Come on. Jesus. You shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So that's, he says, if you do these things, he said, man, you've got a crown. But what's the key to it? It's doing it because you want to do it. That's right. You're not selfish. And you're not angry about it. You're, oh, God, you put me here. That's why, you know, <laughs> in the beginning, what did Adam say? He said, this woman you gave me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, you done messed up. See? Done messed up. So that doesn't work for us now, by the way, because we're born again. <laughs> We new creatures in Christ Jesus, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's something else, too. It's interesting seeing where quotes are made. I, I, I'm one of those. It'll, phew. I'm like, what? I don't, that's not what that says. But, you know, people take funnies and make funnies, and I, I'm, I'm one of those. I don't have a clue and probably insult me, and I wouldn't ever know it. I'd be like, what? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Some people do. They love that. I'm like, uh, what? And of course, I laugh at myself because I'm like, why didn't I get that? Why didn't I get that? It's like, eh, okay. So I could be insulted many times and probably not know it. <laughs> probably not know it. So it says, likewise, you younger. Now, I like this. It says, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves into the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud and give grace to the humble. And when you look at the words, submit yourselves and subject, they're the same thing. It's the same word. It means to put under, to obey, be under obedience, make subject to, submit yourself to. So likewise, you know, submit yourselves unto the elder. It's not sitting here and saying that you have to be enslaved to them, but it means you're humbling yourself enough to them because you know what? If we're the body of Christ, we all supply something, right? And he says, submit yourselves unto the elder. And sometimes when it talks about the elder, people go, yeah, you're elders. But it also means the one spiritually mature, too. That doesn't mean they're older than you, but they can be more spiritually mature. But see, we've got to get past those places of like, well, I've done this this long and this long, and I'm this and I'm this. See, what, where's the key thing? I, me, me, I. See, and, and mothers in here, you know, when it comes to kiddos, is it about you? No. It's about what? It's about the children. It's about the family, you know? So here it says, yea, all of you. It didn't say, okay, young'uns. It says all. Now, it did talk about the younger above it, but then it says, yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. Well, if you're clothed with something, that means what? You wear it all the time. You wear it all the time. And I tell you what, I, the world is so prideful, so arrogant, so conceited. It's all about me, what I believe, what I want. And that's not what the body of Christ is supposed to be about. Know who you are, right? Now it's saying you do this with the body of Christ. You don't, not the world. Know who you are in him. And, and that's where I was talking to somebody the other day and they, we were sitting there and talking about the law and this stuff and it's like, that's man's law. Well, you have to obey it. And I said, no, because I got something that'll break that law. And I go back to the Constitution on things. I said, it was founded based on this. This is what it says. So if that's what it says, then I go by this. And they're like, well, oh. but no, that's man, no. That, that, that's not what that's saying. And here, and it can be come into a debate over this. And people will sit there and what? 
they will get upset because what's the first thing we usually hear from the world when it comes to us? Well, you're supposed to love. You're supposed to be kind. You're supposed to be this. And really, how do you know what I'm supposed to be? I know who I'm supposed to be, and I'm not supposed to do what the world does. I'm not supposed to be like the world. In fact, I shouldn't even look like the world. And if I do, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And so it's interesting, again, the debates that come in on that, even when it comes to homes and parenting. My children are first. You're out of order. Right. Sorry. Well, uh, uh, no, if you go according to what the Bible says, it's God in you, your spouse, then the children, there's an order. Well, no, no, my children can't take care of them. And I'm, I hear this a lot. My children can't take care of themselves. They need me to do it. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is when you put them over everything else, when you put them over everything, first off, talking with someone the other day, their health is declining. And I said, why? Because they're too busy. Well, I've got my children to take care of. Well, what are they going to do if your health keeps declining and your faith isn't there to believe for the wholeness that God has already provided and you've got children growing up in the household? So you're not doing the part for you. That's not selfish. You still have to do your part for you. But people can get that twisted and turned. And so now they're in a place they don't want to hear it. And I have to watch this. And it's somebody that I love very much. And it's like, okay, well, I'm here if you need me. But that's where we're at. You know, and it's hard. It's hard. And people think, well, that's cold and that's... Uh, no, it's not cold. It's yeah. truth. And that's something else I find interesting, too, is whenever you walk in truth and people are like, why aren't you broken? Why aren't you devastated when there's a death or something? I say, why should I be? And I ask them, why should I be? But that was a loved one. You know what? I die too, and I darn sure am not grieving over that one. I'm celebrating my life, just like I'm going to celebrate theirs, regardless if they only had 10 minutes of it. It don't matter, because I know where they are, and I'm celebrating that. So he goes on and says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may what? Exalt you in due time. So there's a promise right there, right? Isn't that a promise? Yes. But again, we have to what? Humble ourselves. Doesn't mean you're a doormat, right? right. Doesn't mean you let people walk on you. But what's beautiful about the body of Christ, instead of getting so angry about something you don't agree with, why don't you just sit down and talk about it? Right? But see, that also shows you when you're dealing with flesh and you're dealing with carnality and you're dealing with selfishness, you don't want to talk about those things. But what do, what do we try to do as parents when we have our children? Teach them what? Don't be selfish. Share. Sharing is caring. <laughs> And you what a little kids look at you like, mm-mm, no, no. You made that up. How many of y'all know that? You know it. But the thing is, when it comes to the body of Christ, that's exactly what we should be doing. We should be able to sit down and have these conversations, talk about these things, and, and hear why we do the things that we do. You know, you can fall into a place, as we call a rut, if you choose to. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Because we're coming into a place, again, we got to be strong. we got to be courageous. I believe the Bible tells us that, right? Yeah. Be bold. Right? Yes. And then he goes on, he says, casting all your care upon him because Why? for he cares for you. He can have my cares. I don't want them. They weigh me down too much. But how many of us, we don't pay attention when stuff starts weighing us down and then we get caught up in it. 
And, it, and the word when he says to be casting our cares, when you cast something, it means to cast upon. And the only other time that was used in Scripture, whenever they brought the donkey and they were the one that Jesus was riding in and they cast the things up on the donkey. That's the only other time this was used. But it, go back to seven. Casting all your care. All of it. When you cast all your care on him means I trust you the truth to show me what I need to do, what I don't need to do. How many will try to fix something on their own? But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you try to fix things on your own and you really don't do this right here, it's not saying that you're not capable of doing things. That's not it. That means I can't do this and so I'm casting on you and I'm trusting you with it, not me. But we tend to not want to do that. We want to try to do it ourselves. But he says, no, I care for you. I, let me help you with this. Let me show you. Let me guide you. Let me lead you. But until you do, I can't do anything. Right? But he didn't say just some of it. He said, what? All of it. And that's a big thing we talk about even in New Way is we talk about this right here is people have to understand if you don't give it to him, you can't get from him. Right? <clears throat> Everybody still good? Yes. Okay. Then it goes on and says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, as, didn't say he was, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resisted steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And the afflictions are talking about your emotions. It's talking about your influences. So he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you what? Perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever. Amen. So again, he said you're going to go through stuff. Everybody in this room is going through something. Whether it's in the relationship, whether it's within you, whether it's in whatever. But you have to understand you've got to go through this stuff. And he's going to show you how to do it. He's going to help you with it. But if you don't let him, then you're going to create more stuff than you have to. We see a world right now that has tried to do everything themselves. And what's happened to the generation? Well, I can tell you, whenever I was growing up, we were talking about this. You got put outside during the day, go play, do your thing, but yet you knew the boundaries because you were taught boundaries, you were taught respect, you were taught, but now go out, play, you're going to learn some things, you're going to be all right, right? You knew when to be home, you knew when bedtime was, you knew when supper was, right? You knew all these things, but what's happened over time? Man, the next generation, well, I'm not going to grow up like I was raised. I'm going to raise my, my kids are going to be done, raised differently. How's that working? No boundaries, no disciplines. I wonder who the parent is anymore. Come on. I wonder who the parent is anymore. And people don't like when I talk about it. They get very upset, very mad. And it's like, well... I have found, again, this, this takes us where there is a big division because it's like with my generation, no, we know based on this how to raise a child according to this, how to sit here and solidify your family. And then you sit there and the world's coming in and they're wanting to tell you how to do it to a place now you can't even discipline your children. You can't, you're not supposed to tell them no, that's, that's mean. That's child abuse. No, really? 
I mean, it's also gotten to the point that kids can divorce their own parents. Really? When was that a thing? Well, it became a thing. And the sad part of it is, it was allowed. It was allowed. So that's why when you have, and I hold fast, I didn't get to be a godly mother till later on, but when, when I started standing my convictions, standing on what the Word said, whoo, you feathers were flying. Because what? It happened later. I can't go back and fix anything, but now I get to what? I can also do that for others. I can show others how to do it, right? Teach others how. It's not too late for who I am just because I didn't come to the Lord till I was grown. It's not too late to be a parent, a mother, in the sense of, let me show you what the Bible said. And, and I tell you what, if the Bible said it, it works. Do it. Well, then I've done this. I've raised my child this way, and now all of a sudden they're out there acting this way and that way. Well, you know, they're going to try that, okay? But don't give up. Find your scripture. Find what God said, and that's what you hold fast to. The world is not more powerful than the Word. Right. Come on. If God gave you a word on it, that it's done. Right? God gave me a word about my family. I prayed for years that none of them, none of them will go to hell. I did. I prayed that and I prayed it and I prayed it and I said, Lord, that's my prayer. I didn't even pray that they walked their, their purpose out. I just, that was all I knew. I got a word on it. God gave me a word. Some things I didn't like, some things, yeah, I'm good. His word doesn't change. It's what people choose to do. And I had to learn that. Because some people choose something else. Some people choose another way, right? But the thing is, with my immediate family, guess what? I believe they're in heaven. Maybe they didn't walk out their purpose, but that's what I, but I believe they are because they accepted Jesus at that moment, that last moment. And I trust God in that. Now, when I get up there, things are different, okay, but I know what I believe according to this. See, I can't see it, can I? Can I just run up there and just say, hey, are you here? <laughs> no. But what I can do is trust this. And no matter what the situation, circumstance ends up being, I'm still trusting this and doing what I'm supposed to do, trusting what I'm supposed to trust. Because God said he and only he would never leave me nor forsake me. That's what he said. And that means if I rely on people to never leave me nor forsake me, I might be disappointed. I trust that he in them is greater than themselves. Just like he in me has to be greater than me. You know? But right now, the enemy has come so much in the family dynamic, and we've seen the condition of it, but now I'm watching people that are in the church rocking. Because what? Oh, wait, there's a little disturbance in the family? Well, you got the word. It works. And the only one promise that won't leave you or forsake you is him. So, hey, you got to stand strong on that. That's what I need. And God, you work out the rest. It says, verse 11, to him be glory and dominion forever. Amen? Does that mean it's always easy to deal with when you have children that don't want to follow what you know is true, what you know is right? It's hard. It can be hurtful. Grandchildren, whatever, it doesn't matter. But you know for you what is solid. And that's him. That is the truth. And that's the truth that will set you free if you allow it, if you trust it. But if you keep looking to man for your truth, it's going to disappoint you every time. It really will. If I look to my... Okay. 
I'm going to be honest with my about me. When I look to my, when I get to the place, I look so to myself that, oh, okay, okay, I, nope, I'm, this is truth. And then I start looking at me as being the truth. I usually find out, ooh, I didn't have all truth. It's not that I didn't want truth, but see, I can't be unteachable. I can't stop learning. And when I think I got it, I find out I probably don't. I got some of it, but I don't have the fullness of it. Every time I go back and I look at truth and I see truth is the person that walked on this earth. Truth himself, no lie within him. Man. And it says that the enemy is what? The father of what? Lies. He's the father of all lies. So whenever I see Jesus, whenever I see the word of God, that's my truth. And that truth walked, he submitted to his parents. Remember when they couldn't find him after they came back from the temple and they went back looking for him and then when they finally found him, he was what? He was about his father's business. But then it goes back and it says, though, that he submitted. When he got back, after he said what he did, he did submit to them, talking about his parents. So Jesus even, I've heard people try to say, well, see, look what Jesus did. He went and he preached when he was 12. He did this, he did that. Oh, yeah, but let's go back to the next part. There wasn't nothing that we don't live out that he didn't do or show us how to do it. And it said that he even submitted to them when he came back. He said, okay. Doesn't mean it suppressed who he was. That's not what that was about. See, sometimes people think, well, <laughs> there's been a, we've talked about this before. I've, over the last few years, because I was big into traveling with ministry, going to conferences, doing all this, and I felt like over these last few years, it's just, that's not happened. It's like all of a sudden, that's all stopped. And it was something I was so used to. But see, sometimes God needs to get you set. He needs to get you planted somewhere. It's like, no, that's all good, but that, that's done. That doesn't mean it won't come back later, but that part's done. You need to come where I'm telling you to come and you need to stay there and see what God's doing. And the thing is, so many times people had the misunderstanding. Oh, well, God's called you to go and teach and this and this, but he did more than that. He also called me to sit down and hear truth that nobody else was speaking. He called me to come and sit down and be a part of a truth. And I said, truth that I... I, I was reading, but I wasn't hearing nobody preaching or teaching. But I was reading it. I was hearing it. And I was like, okay. And then when I would ask questions, then what? Nobody would explain it. Nobody could explain it. And it was like, oh, my goodness, Lord. But see, I come here. And now it's pretty cool because I, when we flow, all flow together, you'll find that all of us are on the same page somewhere. Your scripture may not be mine, but then again, it could be. Or God could be showing you something. And then here's the scripture you need. I love it. That's what a body does. My toe don't always know what my finger's doing, but it's still in sync together. Because what? It's moving. It's going forward. Right? Everybody good? All right. Uh, let's see. Go to Proverbs 3. And these are very, very familiar scriptures. Verse 1. My son, my daughter, I like that. My son, I still think about that. Whenever Pastor Danny talked about, you know, the young lady said, listen for your name, and he kept hearing son. And I'm like, wow, I just can't let that go. 
But that shows you the power of a truth and what it'll do to you when you don't let it go. You don't want to because it shows you who you are. I want to hear, daughter. That's what I want to hear. So he says, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. So there right there's a promise if you keep them, right? If you will sit there and if you will take them and attend to them. Why? Because they will show you how to get through everything. They will show you how to handle every situation. That's part of the problem also why so many people are sick because of anxieties and because of pressures that they've allowed onto themselves and it's overtaken them so much that it's affected their bodies. And then what does that do when it, anxiety does to your body? It begins to what? It literally will take months, years off of your life if you're not watchful about that. A lot of people don't understand that, but it's been proven over and over again. He says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all. Trust in the truth with all of your heart. Trust in the truth. And if, here's the thing. So many people do have trust issues. But just because a man let you down, people let you down, he will not let you down. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the truth with all your heart. Do not lean unto your own understanding. I sometimes have to, on purpose, not even think about what I'm trying to understand because I know it's not enough. If it hasn't worked thus far, then it probably won't because there's something more. There's something deeper. And I'm telling you, this is where so many times, and you hear people a lot of times, and there's like, as we call them, redneck jokes and stuff. And at first you hear them and you're like, oh, that, that's kind of true. And then it's like, all of a sudden the Lord will, that is not true. You're making fun of people, you know? But the thing is, in that moment, oh, that's a good saying. That's funny. That's a good joke. And it's not true, though. But because it sounds good, and it actually can look like it identifies a situation, then we tend to what? A lot of people like one-liners. They like the one-liners. And those the one-liners are dangerous. But he says that... Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths and only him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? Truth. Acknowledge truth and truth will direct your paths. Right? Again, that's why it's important that you study daily and understand what he's saying. But to understand it, you have to what? Study it. You need the Holy Spirit to help bring revelation. It's that important. I hear, you know, it's like God is... God is just really, and, and the way things are being brought, even every Sunday when I sit over there, I am pulling everything I can because God is trying to bring us to a place that we understand things greater than so many out there. No, understand. Because we, I believe, are so important. And I don't even think we fully understand what God's going to do and how he's going to use us. But I know that I know that he is. And it's not just for this body right here. It's for greater. And I know we keep talking about it and talking about it, but we have to keep, we got to keep talking it up, as they say. Because why, if you don't, how are you going to get it in you? How are you going to keep 
okay, there must be something to this. Yeah, we're going to bring it this way. We're going to bring it that way. We're going to bring it this way. If it's truth, then it's got to keep coming. You know, so many times people want to sit here and they say, well, we want to hear something new. We hear, we talk about that. There's nothing new under the sun, right? You want to get away to something new because maybe you're uncomfortable with what's being spoken right now. And you got you to gotta check yourself on that. And you got to find out, Lord, what do I need in this, Right? Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Again, so what are you saying? I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm practicing evil. If it is not truth, then what is it? It's a lie. And what is that? Evil. There's things that I find that as I grow more in the word and more in the Lord, I'll find that, oh, that's evil in his eyes. I can't watch that no more. Or... It may be things that I'm reading. Whatever it is, it, it is what it is, and that's just what I have to accept it as. So that what? Truth can set me free. So that I can what? Go to the next. Again, it comes for me, it's conversations. A lot of people can cut jokes and say things, and I used to could do it too, but I'm like, I can't. I, don't, I want it to be so foreign to me I want it to be so foreign to me because the Bible says that we're to edify one another, right? We're to lift up one another. We're to build. We're to come up, one, or, you know, help. And sometimes some of the things that I hear, I'm like, ooh, no, no, mm-mm. And I want to get away from that. That should be how real this is in our lives. And that's... First off, you're the leader of yourself. You're the one that leads you, right? You're the one that goes, see, again, everybody goes, I got the Holy Spirit leading me. Yeah, but you got to go connect with him. You got to lead yourself to him. You've got to go to the word because the word can't talk to you and the word can't, he can't even move. The Holy Spirit can't reveal anything if you're not leading yourself to the word. So again, this goes to a place of we can't put it on others. Right? Right? right. So the last one we're going to go to, and I'm going to close up, go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I talked about this Tuesday, and I didn't quote it quite right, so I'm, I want to go to the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Or we'll start at verse, and I just, we'll start at 12. We'll just do it that way. It says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. So go back to verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. Now, we hear people say that, oh, God won't give, you know, tempt you and with more than you can bear, give you more than, all this stuff, right? Well, we're looking at Scripture. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But what will he do? With the temptation, who is going to make a way to escape? He is. The truth will. So there's nothing you're in right now that the, the truth is not going to what? Lead you out but you have to lead yourself to the truth so it can lead you out. 
again, we want to sit there and say, the Holy Spirit, you lead me, you guide me, all this. Yes, but you have to go first to him. You have to go to the word because there's nothing in your life. So if you're struggling with something in your life and you're like, God, why, why, why? God said, well, you know what? It, there's the situation, but if you'll come to me, I'll show you how to get out of it. Come on. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it? Everything can be a temptation. It's just whether you choose to get caught up in it. You can choose to argue over a situation that is really no purpose in it just to say I'm right. If you want. I was tempted. Well, you fell into that one. Didn't you? And so people are like, well, yeah, okay. Well, you didn't have to. There was a way out, but did you find out what that was? Yeah. See, this is where, this is where, when it comes, right now, we are also in a place that strategy is important. Strategy is important because, look, the world, they're flinging everything out there. Well, if we can't get somebody this way, we're coming this way, and we're coming this way, and we're coming this way, and we're doing stupid here, we're doing stupid there. I don't want to fall into that. So I choose not to deal with all that. But if I hear something catches my attention, I want to know, okay, if that's the temptation and that's what looks like it's coming, then I want to find a way out. I'll give you an example. COVID came. We were talking about this the other day. COVID came. Everybody fell into what? The temptation of what? What everybody said. You got to do this, 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 this. What did we do? We said, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because that's not what the Bible says. Meaning, we went one time, we went to a place. Give you an example. We went to a place and we were talking to a lady and I was reading my Bible, getting ready for Sunday. Just to, and Farron was talking to her and she said, well, if y'all are Christian, y'all would wear a mask to protect the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and Farron's like, well, if you're a Christian, don't you believe enough that your mask will take care of you? And she just kind of looked. I think she got up and walked away. I think everybody did because that was like, what can you say to that? I mean, that is an example of one of those things. We're not going to sit here and compromise who we are just because you're falling for it. And the biggest thing was, it wasn't the world. It was really a lot of people that sitting there saying, I'm Christian. I'm like, is your mask not enough for you? Because I don't need one. I remember my granddaughter was with me when we went into a store and a woman screamed because we come in there without a mask, said, you're not allowed in here. My granddaughter looked at her and I said, I guess fear is running through here and I don't want to be in here. Now, I could have been, now here, catch me, because some people would go in and make a big ordeal. I don't have to wear a mask and I do oh, oh. And it would just create fights and schisms. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to fall into that? I just fell into what? The argument that they're struggling with, the fear that they're struggling with. I'm not going to participate in that. I looked at my granddaughter. I said, well, we're not allowed in here. Let's go. And we left. Then I'd find though, and here's what was also, it got where people would go with me somewhere and they wouldn't wear a mask because I wasn't wearing a mask. But yet I'd find out when they weren't with me, they were wearing masks. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, what? What? You fell into it. I find if you'll notice when people are around you and they see the boldness and where you don't compromise who you are, I find it interesting when I'm around them because they're like, you go first. It's like going into a situation where there could be a conflict. You go first. Why? I'm nervous. I don't know what they'll do. Well, you won't know till you go. So it's like, come on. See, they don't know who their protector is either. Mm. But there's so much fear there. If I sat there and I sat down and I, I feared everywhere I went, then fear's going to have something for me there everywhere I go. Yeah. And I'm not doing that. 
So the temptations are there. But he says he'll make a way out. And there's times it's, you might need to say, is this a temptation or do I need to stand? See, it's important you have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's important you have the relationship with the Word because some things are a distraction and they'll get you so to the left and they'll even come in your home and they'll create schisms in your home when you should both seek the Word to find out is, there, is this something that really we need to grow up in? We need to come and grow and stop trying to fight like little kids about it. I'm right, no, I'm right. No, I'm right, I'm right. I'm right. What's the temptation? See who's right? The word's right. That's what's right. You know? So understand, again, I know that I know that I know God is going to do something with this body right here that y'all may not know. I don't fully know, but I know it's important enough that he's been preparing us for how long, how many years? And we've just been walking along, not even understanding everything we're doing. Some things is just to show, will you do it? Will you just do it? Not even understanding. And I'll make sure you have everything you need just to do it. And then you're like, okay, we're doing it. And it's like, hmm, why do we do this? Why do we do that? Don't know, but we'll find out. That's a key. That's a key. But how many things could have, okay. There were times in this walk in these last few years, and we've talked about this. Y'all know Pastor Danny, he's like, no, God gives him something. That's it. That's the way to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it, right? It's in you. That's just it. So there's been certain situations that in the past that he'll come and he's like, man, God's talking to me and I'm over going, oh no. That can't move him. If God is saying it, and we talk about this, and I'm learning this, this is part of us growing together. I'm learning sometimes, shh. Because if God has given somebody something and they know that's what's supposed to be done. Sometimes he's not asking your approval. He's just asking for the assistance to help get her done. Right? See, that's where, again, you've got to trust this. So here's what I do. And I've learned this and I try, I've always tried to tell people this. Look at the fruit. It'll never let you down. If you struggle with a person being too familiar, whatever, look at their fruit. It will never let you down. I promise you. I promise. And that's one thing I like when I see people with fruit. Even if I don't understand what God's saying to them and I don't get it, I'm learning when to shh. They got fruit. I see it. Maybe I need to just be in agreement with that and let God show up in it. You know? Everybody good? All right. We're going to stop there. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for family. Father, we thank you. You've chosen this family for such a time as this. Lord, you've chosen everyone in this room and that they accept the call, that they continue to seek truth, they continue to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit for the revelation. That we never get too complacent that we don't want to hear what the truth has to say. Because, Lord, we know it's the truth that breaks all bondages. It's the truth that brings manifestation. Lord, you know every situation in this place. And Lord, we stand on truth no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems. We don't give up on, we don't give up on truth because truth doesn't give up. Truth is solid. Truth is absolute. And it cannot be changed. So Lord, as everyone leaves, to enjoy the rest of their day with family, friends. Lord, bless each and every one. And Lord, that we hold fast that you have chosen us for something amazing 
and we continue to grow where we need to grow so that there is fruit that remains and Lord the skills that we don't even know we have begin to develop and, and grow for Lord that you get all the glory and you get all the honor in Jesus name Amen